Yes, please proceed, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. Good morning. Topic for today is tenders and contracts case studies. To take you through the topic, we are privileged to have Sri A.K. Jar, a brief profile of Sri A.K. Jar. He is a B.Tech and M.Tech from IIT Kanpur. He holds a PhD in civil engineering. He also has loads of experience in open line construction and international projects. He is currently working as CD headquarters SC Railway. Now over to Sri A.K. Jar for today's topic. Welcome, sir, to the session. Yeah. Good morning. Uh... I am thankful to uh, you uh, for giving such a nice introduction. Uh, you see, uh, basically, I am not a teacher, so I request you to engage me. Like, say, if I am uh, presenting something, if you have a point, please interrupt me so that we can have meaningful discussion. I would like to know how many of us are there today in this uh, webinar. How, how many of uh, how many participants are there? Right now, forty-one, sir. Forty-one. So they are from different zones. Okay. Zone one, Okay, uh, so uh, I think uh, instead of what I have thought is instead of giving you total provisions and then uh, reading out and then asking you to see para so and so of engineering code, para so and so of business manual and all, I have uh, mainly uh, structured the presentation like this. Let me go to presentation mode so that it is more visible. Okay, so uh, I'll give you a brief overview of how works are uh, sanctioned, then uh, how contract is to be administered and the case studies of tenders and contracts, what can go wrong, how to solve a tender, where you have to be very rigid and where you can be flexible and all. Finally, take away if required time with time permits, then maybe IR EPS. Then uh, I always welcome suggestions from participants because nobody is perfect and uh, one should keep on learning. Okay, uh, first, just have a look at this. Six, six items which I have posed to the group. I include myself also because I'm part of railway and uh, it's our bread and butter and we have been uh, working on railways for a long time. So these are the basic questions that we should uh, ask ourselves. Is project execution slow on Indian railways? Are PSUs able to deliver whereas railway is not? What else delivery of project on Indian railways? Importance of organizational goal then planning versus execution and corporate plan for Indian Railway. Uh, on any of these items, if anybody has a reaction and opinion, you want to say something, I'd like to hear from uh, audience if, if there is anything, any comment on these items. Okay, uh, I'll go one by one. So project execution. Do you think uh, it's uh, slow? It is the pace is okay, or we need to expedite. But what is the opinion of the you know participants? Because this is one area where uh, we were being criticized in past. Of late, we have improved our delivery, particularly if you talk about infrastructure projects. Uh, I'll give you some figures so that you get an idea. Like say about uh, ten years back, we used to uh, construct about say. Thousand kilometer or so of new uh, all lines put together on railways, but now that figure has gone up almost to three thousand over last ten years. So pace has improved, but this in this output includes output by PSUs also, like RBNL or some places. Right, server is working on project construction is working. Econ uh, is working. So all output put together is much better. But then the question remains whether. ESUs are able to deliver, whereas we are lagging. This question, I leave it to you. If you have no reaction, think about it. Because some of you might, be work, might have worked in PSU also, maybe on a depression basis, or you have joined for some time. And so you will have some experience because I have worked on a PSU also. Uh, then if, if, you, if we think that we need to improve the delivery of the project, what is the, what are the, first we should know what is the, Reason why we are not able to deliver. Then, you see, organizational goal is very, very important. And unless each one of us have same goal and we work towards that goal, it's not possible to achieve that goal. So goal has to be very, very clear. Like say in a construction project, goal of everyone, like say right from 
chief administrator after construction till the lowest rank person has the same objective that this project has to be opened similarly but then he also requires support from different portals like he has to coordinate with different departments for approval of plans approval of uh, drawing etc give me a minute huh? sir ek lecture mein ho sakta hai lecture to bada yeah so uh, when i say our national goal we should have a goal like say where we want to be after 20 years planning versus execution i think probably uh, when a project execution is discussed we normally think of execution mainly planning part is something which is very very important and when i say planning 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 includes site investigation conceptual planning your design site hurdles your legal hurdles whatever you are likely to encounter you must account for in the beginning of the project and a substantial portion of the project <coughs> like say if we have a 6 years duration of the project roughly about one third should be devoted on planning investigation design and anticipating all the hurdles that you are likely to encounter when you move to site is even for you so planning should be given due importance where this is one area where we are lagging that planning part needs to be improved when i say planning planning means investigation design <coughs> Then your uh, legal hurdles, etc. You should think in advance. <laughs> Do we have a corporate plan in any reaction? Please get on this item because corporate plan for Indian railways. We had some document called Vision 2020. Then we have some white paper. But do we have a corporate plan? At least I have not seen. If any one of you have uh, gone through anywhere, what is the corporate plan of Indian railways? we can discuss that but uh, to my mind to my knowledge best of my knowledge we don't have any corporate plan unless we have a corporate plan we cannot work towards that plan and it should be known right up to the bottom level so that everybody has that goal in mind let's say i'll quote one example when i was working in malaysia on a double tracking project the goal of the project or you see entire uh, malaysian railway had a plan for this project that the travel time between rawang to ipoh is to be reduced by 65 minutes by doubling the track and if you go to any of the project office they will say this is my objective and goal is to commission this project within so and so and there was a clock so in you have or so many one year 11 months so many days and so many hours and minutes left for the execution of the project so we need to have a goal and then a corporate plan if you need to you know achieve uh, something in long run okay uh, just to refresh your memory because uh, some of you might be wondering how a work is sanctioned and uh, how it is executed on indian railways first of all requirement of work when we say requirement of work like say <coughs> on a section suppose you want to increase throughput of a line is doubling is the the best option or we can do something else also <coughs> like say if block sections are very very long 15 km 20 km which we have in that case it is better to go for a block station in between so that <coughs> the throughput will increase instead of going for doubling or maybe even if it is say 10 km probably you can go for a ibs so that your throughput increases so those options i am just quoting an example for any work like say if you want to construct a building before that we should explore the possibility whether any existing building should be can be used for the purpose or not so requirement of work has to be <clears throat> defined or you know planned in very meticulously whether we can survive without or a new work or by supplementing a existing asset or by utilizing an old asset or alternatives must be worked out before we say that this is absolutely necessary and we must invest money on this <coughs> project or work
Okay, so once a requirement of work has been established that okay, this is a third essential, then on sanctioning authority requires some basis on which work is to be sanctioned. So abstract estimate is prepared, then sanction of work is done by a competent authority. In case of project, mostly it is railway board, Ministry of Railways. <coughs> once a work is sanctioned, then you go for final location survey, then you go for detailed uh, estimate preparation. Once the estimate is sanctioned, then you start planning contract. And you go, uh, go ahead with the invitation of tender and you find that contract. <coughs> you see, uh, uh, please go through this uh, four or five items because this is very, very important. These are almost uh, like a prerequisite for invitation of tender. Okay, uh, you see, uh, the basic thing is that if you want to invite a tender, you must have a clear site. Or if it is a new line or doubling project, you must assess your land requirement and you must see that land is available, only then we should invite a tender. Then the alignment drawing, let's say if you want to construct a building, where the building is to be constructed, it should be agreed to by all concerned and GD should be approved at appropriate level so that there's no dispute about site once you have awarded the contract. Then site investigation. Site investigation is uh, essentially required because like say if you are in a coastal area, the geotechnical conditions might be little, uh, totally different than if you are in a say hilly area or in a genetic plane. So site investigation is a must because that decides the type of foundation that you are going to construct. And that decides a lot of things like say, what, how much time you need, what type of foundation, how much cost, construction method, equipment required, experience of contractor in that field and all. So it's very, very important that we devote time on site investigation. And uh, I, request, I request all of you to be liberal if somebody comes forward with a proposal of say, from two lakh, four lakh rupees to buy an equipment or a quotation that I want to investigate site because very you will find that we, we are not devoting time on this item and this, that leads to problem later on. Once you have investigated site, then you must have it will finalize your design, drawing, and technical specification of the work. Flow of fund used to be an issue. Currently, I think it has been streamlined. Of course, we have problems here and there, but on a broader mm, mm, you know, perspective, if you look at the Availability of funds for last seven, eight years, there has been improvement and it, it has become more or less a question of delivery, whether we can deliver in a uh, time bound manner or we cannot deliver. Then tender documents, including specification, special conditions, etc. These are the prerequisites, which, which is the role of executive that you must be ready with all this before you invite a tender. In case you do not do all this, then in, even after financial of tender, you will have problems. Like you give a time period of say 18 months or two years, but you will end up uh, in a situation where you are not able to place the work even after 24 months or 36 months. That happens. <laughs> Any reaction on this item? I, I, I have reactions from the audience because as I told you, I'm not a teacher. So please uh, react. Please ask questions so that we interact. Audience can unmute the, yourself and uh, ask yeah. Yeah, yeah, better so that we have an interactive session because it's not yes, yes. Like a student teacher. <laughs> yes, you can unmute yourself. Uh, all unmute, the unmute, unmute, and those who want to ask questions, they can switch on their videos also so that uh, we can have interaction. Uh, please feel free because nobody has answered to all the questions under the sun, and uh, I also don't have. So we will discuss and maybe I am able to answer your question. Maybe I learned something from you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, so I'll give you one example before I leave this, uh, change this slide. Uh, you know, uh, how important a design and technical specification can be. Uh, all of you are well aware that uh, when we, uh, you see, uh, 
either do a track relaying work or we do a new line work or doubling work. We keep on joining rails by a process which is called aluminothermic welding process. It's nothing but a you know, portable foundry process through which you join two rails using a technique whereby you heat up the rail and then you keep a mold and uh, of almost of similar composition, you pour molten metal and then you cool it and you try to join it so that there are no fissurated joints to improve running and reduce maintenance cost. So this thermic portion uh, currently is being, being manufactured by outside, uh, basically vendors who are approved by RDS1 and then we have only one plant at uh, Lucknow. In 2018, uh, Basically, our railway board uh, <laughs> instructed South Central Railway to set up a plant. If we look at you know our experience, like say uh, in setting up a plant, we don't have that expertise because our job is different. So once a job is given to railway, like say in the month of December, our general manager at the time got a call from board you know, asking to South Central Railway to go ahead with the setting of the target course and plant. And immediately following the letter also came from board. So we took almost two months time to prepare a detailed project report, how we are going to do it, because we were not having any idea. And then we said, we sent DPR to board. And it was, board said that, okay, DPR, you can go ahead. In the month of April, they sanctioned the work, another March, March or February probably 18. They sanctioned the work also under umbrella work of Robert Railway at a cost of 21 crore rupees. Then, you see, as it happens in railways, you are always under tremendous pressure to float a tender. And I was the one who was who is supposed to set up this plant. At my, of course, the divisional team, team was there, and I had to guide them, and I had to give them the specification, because they also do not do anything. So this uh, thermic portion manufacturing is totally a different type of thing. Like, say, something in common it has got with cement manufacturing, like say rotary kiln for heating up uh, components of uh, thermic portion, like say mill scale, steel chips, to a temperature of uh, some 700 degrees centigrade. You need a rotary kiln, which has to be automated. You have to maintain certain temperature, then it has to be cooled down, then it comes out. Similarly, auto batching plant. It was all new to us. Uh, auto batching plant is very common in case of you know food manufacturing things or even uh, your uh, mm, uh, industries which have, uh, you know, like say, um, uh, which manufacture pen etc. But they have a different setup. Like say, somebody is dealing with liquid, somebody is dealing with material which is not similar to the material. So, within six months' time, I was in a tremendous pressure from different quarters, including the railway board, that you call tender. But I was not convinced that unless I know the ins and outs of how it is manufactured and uh, what I, am, I expect out of this say, um, roasting process. What specification I adopt for rotary kiln? What specification I adopt for my auto batching plant? How, where from material I can get? But, and also, finally, uh, after eight months' time, probably board thought that it's the right time to talk to railway, but what they can do. Then I, I got a call from my incident member in board that you have to decide this and invite tender without any delay. Then I raised my hand saying that unless I do my technical part of it, I cannot ask my divisional team to go ahead with tender because we will we do not know what we want out of tender. So one has to devote time and take a stand also because if I buckle, my divisional team will divide, uh, go for a tender and we do not know what we want out of the tender. So this part is very, very important, especially if you are doing your work, which is not a routine work. Even for routine work, one has to prepare. Okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, tenders, uh, once you have finalized, then you issue letter of acceptance. Thereafter, site should be handed over, that should be on paper. Then you execute a contract agreement, then work is commenced. Then it, start, it starts administration of contract. Administration of contract is very, very important in the sense that the authority who has invited, the, who are all, who are all supposed to administer the contract, they should keep on going through the contract documents and keep on assessing whether there's a need for any revision of quantity, whether some item is to be added, some item 
are not getting executed and all, and what are all the all other requirements of a contract. So just see this, you know, cyclic chart once, then I'll again continue. Okay, so uh, as I was saying, all concerned have, uh, are supposed to go through contract documents. Then site must be handed over in writing. Design specification drawings are to be handed over to the contract to preferably through a written communication. Then if it's a project site, quality control labs are to be established. Then site order book has to be opened. Site registers are to be maintained for quality control records. And again, the cycle continues. Like, say, you have to keep on revising, reviewing what is happening at site, what improvements are required, or whether anything is lacking is the contract conditions, either your authority or contractor's authority. And the site order book is a very, very powerful document and must be opened and used. I'll quote a, an example that gives you an insight of how powerful a site order book can be. Like, I was uh, in charge of a Dublin project, project was in Maharashtra. As you know, Maharashtra has a very acute shortage of water, particularly during uh, summer season. It was month of May. I went to site, I found that earthwork has commenced, but adequate water arrangements are not there for addition to these, those soils and compacting it. I asked my DPC and the agency both why you are not following the specification. They said, sir, it is Maharashtra and short possible to raise water and all we will not be able to get water from anywhere. So I had two options. I argue with them, I fire them. I did not do anything. I simply asked for a set of the book and entered my observations and said that work should work is stopped henceforth. Till such time, water supply arrangements are made for site work and, and compaction is uh, done properly and required compaction, degree of compaction is achieved. Uh, those who are familiar with the project execution, uh, they will agree with me that I have achieved chief of the project. So by the time I came back from Nanded, agency was already with, uh, informed CEO that CT had, CE has stopped the work and I'll not be able to do this work. Next morning when I went, went to CEO, he was aware that I have stopped the work. He asked me, why did you stop? I said, sir, this quality ka issue hai, aur main jab tak ye quality issue and I will not do any arrangement. You will not believe after 10 days time, Finally, they realized that there's no way other than, other than organizing water from somewhere and doing quality work. So it all depends on involvement and using your authority. Site order book is very, very important. Similarly, site registers of quality controls because they are very important and must be maintained. Okay, so important uh, point uh, for you uh, from this is, like say, specification drawings. And again, you see, if the moment we realize that there's a Let's say you have finished some 60% of the project and you feel that quantities are almost about to be over some, for some items. That means it requires a revision. So we must assess quantity and then we try to process for variation in time instead of executing first and then going to finance for post fit to approval of variations. Okay, this, uh, this is what I was discussing. Let's say reassess the cost of work. Variation, if any, to be worked out and processed in time. And if you are asking agency to go ahead with the work, that should be on record. Then progress of work needs to be monitored, flow of fund, and timely payment is one issue which we have to ensure so that agency can deliver in time uh, with whatever fund he has invested on the project and the money rotates faster. So this is a contract administration. One item which I think uh, uh, I don't know about, about uh, all the railways, but some of the railways that I have heard. Once a project is finished, that means work is completed in all respects. Completion drawings are to be prepared. Assets are to be handed over. Then 
revised public completion estimates are to be drawn and completion reports are to be prepared and financial closure of project is to be done. Uh, okay, any of the participants, can you give me an idea how many CRs are to be drawn on your railway? Wherever you are working, maybe a project organization, maybe open line, maybe some PSU. Can anybody give me an idea how many, how many CRs are to be drawn on your railway or unit? Please react, I think, uh, so that at least I get a feel like whatever uh, perception I have, maybe my perception will change about completion reports. Please switch on your video so that I can just see and uh, see your reactions. Nobody has any question? Nobody has any reaction? Okay. So, flow of fund, of course, as I said, this is no more an issue, but then adequate funds must be ensured for the work throughout its project life so that you are able to finish the work. And even if, say, there is a fund crunch, then we must prioritize the work, which are to be taken up early, which, are, which can be deferred. And also, this is about flow of fund. Okay. Uh, this is definition of works contract. Please go through it. Then I'll, I'll emphasize important point. Yeah, somebody is saying something. Uh, your voice is not audible. Somebody is talking, but voice is not audible. Okay, uh, I hope you have gone through. Uh, basically, you see, uh, it's uh, nothing new. It's a part of uh, ending code, para P1201. Now, basically, basic uh, you know thing is that it has to be enforceable by law and a person competent to do a contract and free consent of parties and for a lawful consideration. These are the basics of you know first contract. Okay, classification of works contract. If you look at uh, normal in old days, we used to have, still we have zone works, then special works, then supply of building materials. These are traditional selling contracts, but we have a wide spectrum of contract these days for all the departments. We have uh, service contracts, we have uh, contracts for cleaning of platform, we have contracts for you know, housekeeping. So a lot of things have come up. And uh, lump sum contract, civil contract, and Piece work rate contract. Can any, any, anybody has any doubt about this? Please ask so that I can clarify what is a lump sum contract, what is a civil contract, what is piece work or rate contract. Light off. Okay. So lump sum contract is something where you know you ask someone to construct a room for you and so you tell him that I'll pay you say 50,000 rupees. And what all will be there in a room, it has to be decided in advance and it is to be agreed upon. Then schedule contract is something where you have a detailed schedule, like say if the room is to be constructed, then you will excavate foundation first, then you will do from base concreting, then you will do brickwork, you will do column, you will come to shuttle level, you do roof casting. Everything is, you know, piecemeal. So there is called schedule contract. Then a rate contract is something where you have a unit rate, like say DJ Sunday rate contracts. Unit rate is fixed and government departments can place orders and get those items through the DJ Sunday rate contract. Then uh, I think EPC is very, very uh, you know, hot these days and it is being discussed by railways cannot help. 
EPC and people are trying also on project side that we can do, or why can't we do engineering procurement construction? There is a certain value of the project or contract where instructions are there, probably 50 crore or 100 crore that beyond that you have to go for EPC. If you are not able to follow, then you have to take somebody's approval. Yeah. Am I not audible? Hello? Uh, please speak a little louder. <laughs> Mr. Sarvanan, you can talk to me. You unmute yourself, then you talk. Okay, so EPC is some, uh, basically engineering procurement construction. So EPC contract has different aspects, like say engineering functions, like basic engineering, like a concept, uh, concept project, detailed engineering, you go for detailed design, drawing, then planning how a project is to be executed, then construction engineering. That means you have to take care of construction phases. Then it has procurement functions, like say uh, you want to buy certain things for a project or a building. So he will get it for you. Let's say if you're constructing a classroom, he will get your, uh, say, desktop, he will get you a system where things can be displayed, your furniture, everything. So depending on uh, what you have uh, kept uh, as part of EPC content, you get all the uh, requirement. But these functions are to be, you know, basically specified very, very, uh, Minutely, so that there's no issue because EPC is something where you agree for a certain amount and the agency agrees for doing a certain work for you. And that work has to be defined very well. So these are the procurement functions, like he will buy from some, somewhere, he will arrange material for you. Then construction function. So when we say construction, it's not only say building, it will, they will give you, say, let's say if you are constructing a pen set, they will go for erection of your gantry also, they will buy crane for you. Electrical installation means all lighting, all air conditioning, whatever is required for the building. So it's a encompassing all. Then commissioning function. Let's say there is a concept of even uh, once the project has been commissioned, if you want their services, they are there with you for your after sale services also. Then suppose you have uh, a manufacturing plant, you want, they will agree for a quotation after a certain time. So these are basically EPC, so engineering, procurement, construction. These are known by different names also, like EPC is also called lump sum turnkey projects, or there's one more version of engineering, uh, you know, EPC, which is uh, basically called EPCM. So we will come to that later. And these EPC contracts are basically governed by FIDIC conditions. What is called international in, uh, federation of consulting engineers. Then they have a different general conditions of contract and all. And methodology is totally different. Those who have worked on a international project, they will probably have an idea how uh, this is to be governed. Then there is something called EPCM also, which is uh, being talked about. And basically, it is a service contract. Okay, so as I was saying that uh, before invitation of tender, we need to have certain things in place. So engineering code also says, lays down that, what are the documents which forms integral part of the contract? It says conditions of contract, it could be standard or special specification, general specification or special specification, then schedule of items, quantity of rates, agreement from form, instruction to tenders, tender forms, then it says all the specification drawing must be ready before you invite a tender. Then this is all about you know basic of tenders and contracts. Now we come to case studies. Here I'll, I'll request all of you to please be attentive and interrupt me because unless you uh, are, you interrupt me and ask questions, probably I develop a feeling that I'm not able to communicate what I want to communicate to you. Okay, um, I'll give you a background of this case before I go to slides. You know, flashbot building, I hope people know about flashbot building plant. As I was discussing that 
uh, one of the method of building of rails is thermothermic building, which is done at site, and uh, that is a portable foundry process. There is another process of heat resistance building, which is called flash butt building. Here you uh, heat two ends of rail electrically, and then you press it with a force so that uh, in hot condition these metal join each other, and you have a continuous rail. And uh, about uh, 10 years back, uh, this was the a prevalent method of building rails on a project because uh, our capacity of long rail in sale or mobile plant, and stationary plant building capacity at Chitra was very low on Indian railways. Uh, okay, so this is a specific case I am discussing. So the case is of 2010 when I was uh, C construction, I just joined uh, on promotion. So uh, basically, uh, the but the large number of projects were targeted during the year 10-11, and South Central Railway had a target of about 160 kilometer new line construction, where rails were to be welded, free rails were to be welded using mobile transport welding plants, and railway had no contact. It was already month of August when tender was opened. The tender base value was 23.19 crore, supposed to be a big tender at that time. I was junior most chief engineer, but given this authority, by organization that you finalize this tender. The you know the additional information that I would like to share with you that first tender was discharged, although lowest offer was 19 crores some four months back on some technical ground. When tender was invited, lowest offer was 20.24 crore. So you can see that face value is 23 and you got your offer of 20.24 crore, and previously it was 19 crore. So the important thing to keep in mind is that uh, when they went for tendering for second time, the cost of cost has gone up almost by about 1.2 crore, and you have a you know a 160 kilometer target where you require this flash butt building uh, in field. Uh, please go through this you know uh, criteria. This is the general criteria, but just have a look so that uh, you get some idea what I'm talking about. Should have executed similar work of 25 percent. You are well aware. So 23 point some crore was the value. So requirement is 8.11 crore. Then, since this is a case where you need a mobile transport building plant, so the second criteria was that they should have either own a plant or they should have a bench or they should have placed an order and all. So that was second criteria. And third one is normal 150 percent financial. Okay, so. Tender was opened, and these were the three offers. ITC Kanpur, 20.24 crore. PCM had given, was second lowest, but they had a problem with the EMD. Uh, I, since you are all from, you know, background of finance and accounting, so I'll show you the EMD and then expect you to tell me whether this is a valid EMD or not. Just see this document and tell me whether earnest money deposit is valid or not. Yeah, uh, your reaction is required whether this is a valid AMD or not. And anyone, please react so that uh, I, I, uh, just we can have a discussion and we learn something out of it.
Yeah, I hope I'm audible. Yeah, because I think there's no reaction from audience, so I'm worried whether I'm connected or not. Yeah. Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Audible, huh? Okay. Very clear. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, please react to this document. It's a you know, uh, more of a finance thing. Yes, than whether this uh, document can be accepted as EMD or not. Anybody, anybody, anyone can react on this item whether this is an acceptable document or EMD or not. Yes, yes. I think somebody is talking. IT cell can mute the person who is talking. Sir, shall I put all the people because uh, there will be a disturbance, sir? Yeah. During question hour, I will unmute them to. Okay. 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 So no, no, if somebody wants to ask question. Better you allow them to ask questions. Yes. But somebody is still talking. I don't know who is in the background. Yeah. If anybody has a question, unmute yourself and then I want your reaction. But whether this document is valid EMP or not. Okay. 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 I unmuted, I muted to all, sir. Please unmute yourself because there won't be any disturbance by others, sir. Kindly. Okay. Yes, sir. Now it is only for okay. you, sir. Okay, fine. So if you look at this document, it says that PCM Cement Concrete Private Limited. So it's sort of a document and uh, this is the front page of the EMD document submitted by a firm. The question is whether this is a valid document or not. Sir, no audio, sir. No audio, sir. Please unmute yourself, sir. Yeah. It's yes, okay sir. now? Oh, no, it is clear, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Okay. Just a minute. I'll just go to that document so that I discuss from there. Okay. If you look at this document, uh, PCM Cement Concrete Private Limited is the one who has, from whom money has been received. And uh, uh, it so happened that on reverse of it, there was an endorsement on it and uh, there was a debate whether this can be accepted or not. My view was that this cannot be accepted. So the only way was to go back to State Bank of India, the issuing authority. Of course, I cannot go back to Guwahati or a distant place. So what we did was we wrote a letter to local branch of State Bank of India. It will take a while to open. Yeah. Okay, so we wrote to local branch of State Bank of India and asking them whether this TDR can be encashed by FNCO construction, South Central Railway or not. And whatever apprehension I had, it came through that bank said that it cannot be encashed. Just go through the endorsement of the bank on this side. Let's say that you see this endorsement of the bank. It says that
normally it is written not transferable and generally for security deposits it has to be fnco or department and account contractor which is not true in this case so this is how emd issue could be solved because uh, on reverse of it is entry was there which was probably not original entry and it said that uh, basically uh, hypothecated to a fnco or something but it was uh, not a document which can be accepted as emd but this was the only day since it was a high value tender at the point of time and uh, committee was under tremendous pressure from different quarters to qualify someone to disqualify someone so that somebody wins somebody loses so this was uh, one document but one thing which i wanted to share with you that in case you have doubt please go back to bank and ask them whether they went in cash or not okay the so this was one issue so we came out of this by clarification through bank then second item is your credential now work done credential normally uh, the moment a work done credential is talked about we have you know in mind that it should be signed by executive authority because they are the ones who are getting the work executed and they should issue the certificate so this was the work done credential sub submitted by itc kanpur the lowest tender along with the tender if you look at the bottom this is signed by deputy fa construction from northern railway now a uh, previous tender was also discussed on a ground not exactly this but similar ground that in that case the certification of credential was not done by authority uh, who was a jagged officer and it on that account tender was discharged here also tender committee had a different opinion now members rather saying that how a deputy fa can issue a credential certificate for a contract which is handled by executive so uh, what what is the way out you see one way easiest way out is that this charge tender on some preliminary round and then you go for each tender but as i told you in the beginning itself that we had a 19 crore offer then we came to 20 point something and if you discharge tender you lose that opportunity of you know opening a project and cost is also going up <coughs> so the these are the questions ki why work done certificate from finance officer should tender be discharged or should we go ahead if you discharge that is a loss of there is a chance that there will be a financial loss to railways and target etc cannot be met with so finally what we decided as committee after a lot of debate that we will look for a positive option of course we cannot talk to tender once a tender has been opened so we went to our counterpart like uh, still i recall the name of the person he was aditya deputy of construction in northern railway and when i spoke to him he said they have issued this document because this is a railway board contract and i am paying authority and different railways including your railway is has utilized this contract for building of rails so based on that we contacted deputy fa who and uh, finally we sent uh, our officer for seven days time who got all the documents and credentials were verified and it was established that the lowest tender has done the required amount of work of similar nature but this requires you know thorough consideration then you have to do your hard work somebody has to go to delhi and he has to camp there get the data if you look at the verified credential data which is opening now i'll rotate it for you because it's not in the proper shape yeah if you look at this document complete details were given like for the qualifying period say 1472 313 how many bills passed invoice details then folio of case file work done period then number of joints rate total payment made 
service tax reduction reference, payment of service tax, payment of PVC, payment of shifting of plant, all items were there. And if you look at summary, finally it says that 8.35 crore is the total payment made to the firm. And our requirement was something like 8.1. So the lowest tender work credentials were verified like this. So two hurdles were there. First was EMD issue. Second was work done credential. And finally, since there was a um, precedence that same firm had quoted less rate, so we called him for negotiation, but he did not reduce rate, saying that market conditions have changed and uh, we will not be able to reduce much. Of course, notional reduction of rate was done and tenders were was finalized. So in a two months time, we finalized tender with all this problem and one round of negotiation. And uh, rates were uh, better than what was already in, you know, uh, being used in different contexts on adjoining railways and even on open line. So the message is that in case of tender, you have to be very careful, but then you need to deliver also. So this was a case where delivery was authority essential to for the project. And uh, by finalizing tender, probably we saved money also because it was much lower than our own estimated rates. And uh, that was based on tenders already in force on open line and on other railways. Okay, so this was the first case. Second case is, is uh, which deals with you know similar nature of work, how it is to be interpreted. This is a case of construction of major bridge uh, between, uh, it's a non rate division, it was a doubling project. So I have shown the location of these bridges. These are between Purna and Limbagon stations, and uh, other one is between Purna and Limbagon and Nandi. So these are very, very small bridges, 3.1, 3 into 6.1 meter span, then 6 into 6.1 meter span. This project is already commissioned and trains are running now. Of course, it's a long time or seven, eight years have passed since uh, uh, this case uh, happened. Okay, uh, please have a look at these figures. Like say tender was opened on November, uh, in November 13. Tender value was 4.86 crore and these were the offers received. Like say, I have not given names. We will discuss the names also. And these are the you know, offers. If you look at 4.86, 4.95, is a simple one, then second lowest, third lowest and all. So it appears to be a very simple case. This is the, go through the bold portion of criteria. That is very important when you are part of tender committee. You should understand what is the similar nature of work and how much route of credential qualifies for similar nature of work. It was any bridge work involving open by well foundations or any work of only substructure of bridge involving open file well foundation for a minimum value of 35%, that is 1.7 crore rupees. You see, briefing note was written, and then there was an observation from the finance also that description of work credential includes do not seem to be similar to the description of similar work as notified in the tender. The same will be reviewed and put up to TC. It was a tender being dealt by my DTC construction and uh, I was the CEO of the project at the time. So I was executive authority. It appears to be a very simple case, but it was not so. You see, the L1 had two partners. If you look at uh, their you know, composition of the firm, it had uh, uh, two partners. And uh, one of the partners of Elman had been banned by railway board in June 13. And we are talking about, you know, November and all 13. However, the partner ban, what he did, he exited from this firm before the ban, ban came into effect and his wife became the managing partner of the firm. She was already there and she, she became the sole partner. Managing partner of Elman and partner who did has same office address also. The, now the question is whether this firm should be considered a light firm or sister concern and treated as bent firm or not. So that was the question which committee and executive authority had to decide. 
you see a law branch of union was taken so there were different opinion like say if you look at their opinion that they will give that up so their opinion then they will say that it considered to be taken by the community or state authority something like that so basis was you know what what basis uh, what can be basis and what <coughs> and is, it is was debatable like whether it's uh, a sister concern or not I, i'll go go to this you know uh, uh, chapter of uh, particular para villas manual Uh, please see this. What what it says? What is a band public? Uh, what is a sister concern? It defines. It says that para so and so defines allied firm as all concerns which come within the sphere of effective influence of the band suspended firm shall be treated as allied firm. It further states that following factors should be taken into consideration: whether management is common. Whether majority interest is held by partners or directors of the band suspended firm, whether substantial or majority shares are owned by the band suspended firm, by uh, and by virtue of this, it has a controlling voice. So these are the conditions which are to be kept in mind, and then what is an allied firm? And then RBM further says that. there is some supreme court judgment which clarifies that merely because members in a business are related it doesn't amount to family business in fact that one of the members of the family has a control over other business <laughs> unless said business formed from fund of the family concern this is the first opinion of the law officer and the case was given to them this said l1 is neither allied public sustained concern of the sole proprietor who has been banned by railway board not the experience gained by it banned on the ground that works were granted and the band contractor was its family partner so this was the opinion and then the moment this opinion came it was again because deputy ce construction the convener and the committee had a different view and uh, they thought that this is not a case where we can go ahead they again referred it back and uh, law officer gave opinion that unless you give us some document which shows that her husband is a controlling uh, has a voice in the controlling voice we will not consider them as sister concern so being chief minister of the project i was worried and uh, of course pc was also worried and one day he came he said sir i am not able to move forward but we do then i advised him that why don't to do one thing you go see the all all the documents submitted by the tender we used to have fiscal tender both so what what came out was that you know in, in the meantime the moment uh, you see we had opinion from law officer about l1 that work can be given to them as per them there was a complaint from lowest offer lowest tender saying that law officer is biased and he is trying to favor l1 so we referred to higher authority who agreed with the view of law officer it was almost february so we came from december to october to february almost four months time was passed then i told deputy see that they that by the committee should go through the entire documents submitted by the firm and see what is on record the lowest tender of was rr mm. construction and uh, it so happened that the person who had been banned the document submitted by the firm shows that even after june when this firm was banned he has signed bills for claim and submitted to railways so that document <coughs> became very handy and which conveyed to us that although the this person has edited from the firm officially but he has a controlling voice why why there was a complaint so the you understand let us understand that because tenders know much more than what officials know they had uh, that the like person who was complaining he had a different interest of course mm -hmm. not about the interest or officer's interest no so the, the two things are important one is that the l1 firm is was finally considered as a sister concern so and the tender the third tender knew that the l2 
is it doesn't have financial credentials because they did not meet that 150% criteria so the game plan of third person was that he will get the work if these two fellows are disqualified so second was already a clear case and first one also after that yeah somebody is stuck saying something okay no 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 problem okay so when we went to law officer with this document law officer said that yes it is a case of sister concern and cannot be considered so, so finally we could decide that okay this is a bad fun with sister concern and to be treated as banned so l1 is gone l2 is gone and why the l3 was behind it that we will come we'll discuss now this is uh, you know a work of the credential that l3 had submitted it was a work of earthwork information extension of major bridges platform and other machines works at railway kilometer so and so so and so so credential submitted by tender as has been observed by finance also that it doesn't match exactly with the prescribed requirement in the tender documents because similar nature of work is this and the work that he has done is this as i was saying that i'll take a minute give me a minute yeah okay so as i was saying that uh, law of sir now says, says that l1 is to be considered as the last concern the bent for and has Uh, it is also banned, and that offer is becomes invalid. And L two is not having credential. But you see, uh, why? Why? In spite of all this, there was a problem because the third, the third lowest part uh, tender was having a different reputation, and uh, no officer would like to go against him and tell him that uh, tell him on record, tell him on record that your credentials are not okay. So committee in its wisdom. said that no credentials whatever is submitted it meets the requirements so i, I had uh, right from beginning i had been recording one file that it's not meeting with the requirements so this is the movement of file first it came to me on 6614 then it came on 10 i returned on 106 again it came back to me on 1814 7814 i returned 8914 again came back 169 i finally discharged tender against recommendation of tender committee you know discharging uh recommendation of tender committee then you have to give your speaking order because you are not agreeing with committee's recommendations you have to give your speaking order as i told you basic issue was you see it is what it was a bridge work and if you have a bridge work you can compare only with the value of bridge work done by the firm and the, uh, uh, i was showing the basically the work that was done by him is earthwork information extension of major of this date form all put together had some value and the required portion was less than value of 1.7 1.8 crore so i still recall that was a friday and uh, i the moment i accepted uh, got it my speaking order and sent the file back that person probably got um, information of course he should get because tender is discharged now but probably he had access to file also so he started sending messages to everybody my ceo general manager member engineering advisor advisor vigilance 
it he will just he sent a message to everyone saying that this man has harassed me because he um, was asking for money and he did, i did not oblige so he has discharged my tender please have a look at the speaking order because this is very important it was a three page tc and how much i had to write because whatever i had in mind whatever things i had to substantiate i have to substantiate in advance i cannot give any argument after you know i have recorded my reasons my scope of saying anything is over okay that's taking time please wait it will open Okay. In the meantime, we will see uh, how the case has moved. So, tender opened on 26/3/11, and fin finally, I discharged on 17/9. And there was an official complaint to Vijay Singh on 29. Uh, you see, uh, when such thing happens and the message goes to has to her authorities, everybody is second up. So, on I just as I told you, it was Friday evening when I gave my speaking orders and I discharged tender. Monday morning, normally. You see, you are back to work and you will plan things. But I got a call from Secretary GM that GM is calling you immediately. Come with this file. Of course, file was with Deputy C, so I called for the file and met General Manager. He was upset with the you know text which agency had sent to him. Then I told him, sir, I have not done anything wrong and uh, let this case be investigated and let the truth come out. So finally, GM sir said, saw the file. He in detail and then probably file. Sir kept with him. Then finally, it was handed over to agencies. And agencies include uh, did their job for six months' time, and they found nothing, and file was returned back. But the issue is, you see, it was not that committee did not know. Committee knew that the work credentials are not okay, and still they recommended just to avoid, you know, trouble from the person. So that should not be done. If you know that. Somebody is not fulfilling criteria, either financial or physical work criteria, or any other criteria that you have to stay. You have to be at least professionally honest. But in this case, committee had basically set the formality just to have a convenient time with the agency that we have recommended and she has discharged. Okay, let me see if the document is open. Yeah, uh, please have a look at this document. You can see this is a nine-page document. TCP I have not included because uh, it's a document uh, part of you know consulting. But this is also part of that. But I had kept it as uh, my record. So this is a nine-page document where I have given my argument why I do not agree with the tender committee and why I am discharging this. Okay, we will have a look at this. You see, the work done credential submitted by firm was two point five six crore rupees, or two point maybe you can say five six or two point six crore rupees. Out of this, the concerned FTC gave a breakup that total length of formation is so and so, and the work pertaining to formation cutting. That is, if you have a hillock, you cut it for. Uh, leveling the ground and blanketing, retaining wall, etc., was 1.68. That leaves a bridge value of only 88 lakh against a requirement of 1.7, 1.8 crore because tender was of 4.8 crore. So this was my content, uh, you know, uh, contention that 
he the firm doesn't have a required 35 percent work credential. So I stuck to my you know stand right from beginning. This was my stand, and I, I stuck with this stand. And finally, of course, I had to go through that suffering of you know your case being investigated and resistances. Uh, of course, they did not call me at any point of time. They did not question me. But of course, it's just you have all the time that okay, you never know what will happen. But this much I had to write. You can see nine pages I recorded, only knowing fully well that this is my last chance to speak, whatever I want to speak in this case. So the lesson from this case is that if you are taking a decision, put on record everything, whatever you have in mind. This nine page is something which I have I prepared based on whatever had happened in the case, what the specification says, what is the practice, how whether it is feasible, not feasible, or everything I have covered. But it was you know uh, something which uh, whole organization was upset for some time. But finally, what happened after this case, there was a change in criteria itself that if it is a bridge work, only this part will be considered. It was made crystal clear. But then I had to suffer for six months' time. Nothing happened. So this case uh, tells you that three things. One is your document must be looked after and you check very carefully. Whatever documents you have, full documents, the committee must see in the beginning itself. Because whatever happened for three months' time, we could have curtailed. Like say the first opinion of India, second opinion, and third opinion. So. Up to second opinion was a waste of time because document was there on file, tender case file. So delay can be minimized. The similar nature of work has to be defined very clearly, and everybody should get have same interpretation when they go through your similar nature of work description. As I was saying, so finally, uh, after this case, similar nature of work was modified in construction organization. Okay, so how much time we have? Anybody can help me from Sitara. How much time is left? It's about 1.30 till 1.30 or 1.30. So that I try to put it to 1 o'clock, 13 hours. And the question of a minute, it can. It's, it's a, up to 13 hours only. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, what is it? How much time is left? 10 minutes? 15 minutes, sir. 15 minutes. Okay, so I'll cover another case. It's a bigger case study, so it will take time, maybe some, some other time. I'll tell you the lesson. You see, uh, this ROB was a case uh, of uh, you know, deposit work by government of Maharashtra for uh, centenary celebrations of their, you know, Guru and his birthday, I think 100 birthday was there or something was like that. And they uh, came up with a deposit work. What happened was that the fund, given, the, the, although they provided 10 crore rupees in time, but they did not sign that or they did not give anything officially and they did not agree to you know, hear all the costs, whatever have, is required, they the execution of work. Once that celebration was over, the work, this work was not complete and then the, the state government started delaying. They did not want to give any further funds. Of course, this ROB is now executed, but the lesson is that we should assess the scope of our work very carefully so that we don't have to go to state government time and again. And you do not start the work particularly a deposit work, if the state government is not agreeing to conditions which is to be agreed to by state government for deposit work. Okay. This uh, this is a case of, you know, uh, 140 ton crane set uh, at uh, Nandit. So the background of case is like this. This is just a system map of uh, Nandit division. Mutkir is here and almost close to his Nandit, Rujul Sahib Nandit. So it was, it is a case of 140 ton crane set which we require for housing our ART crane. We can see the constructed portion of the set. It was basically uh, a part of Purna Kola gas conversion project and uh, Initially, in the beginning of 2009 case, division was wanted to be done at Purna and they wanted on other series. So, uh, based on division request and site given, construction had already 
IT cell, can you help? There's some why? Yeah. Okay, so okay. It, it was the work was taken up at Purna, which is almost about say 56 kilometers away from Nante, the divisional headquarter. But uh, during, uh, as, it, as it happens, it's change of guard and uh, once you understand the reality of uh, that, you know, system, now Nanded is not wanted, a crane said at Nanded. And they wanted this bus to be stopped at Purna and you pick up this work, same work at Nanded. So when general manager went for inspection, you know, inspection in 2010, it was included in his inspection note that instead of Purna, this should be considered at Nanded now. This is the extract of GM's inspection note saying that how the court, basically uh, those who are from South Central Railway, they will understand the dynamics. We had, you know, uh, loco sets, steam loco sets at Purna, and we have a huge colony and a lot of people are uh, posted there. So if this crane set was there, they are happy and they can be part of, they can be deployed on these assets and they can remain at Purna. The moment you ask them to come to Nanded, probably they are used to, and uh, you have to either be hard or you have to convince our counterparts and uh, our uh, you know, unions that it is required. So from Purna, the decision was taken away, taken that it will be shifted. Then site was not finalized. So with intervention of general manager, site was finalized. And the work was started. Work was almost completed and uh, some more funds were required to complete the work. When the asset was almost ready <coughs> and the uh, contract was about to be completed, what happened? Since this was a old uh, GC project, the funds were exhausted because some force debit came and there were no funds in this part. So with without with you know curtailment in scope, work was completed, and this much money was required. But the crux of matter was nobody was willing to take up you know take over this asset now because there was a change of mind again that no instead of landed again this should be considered Pona. And I was see construction the RM of course told me that you. Constructed Purna. Then I said, I am last person not to do it because we have invested partly at Purna. Again, we came back to Nanded. We have nobody is taking up asset, uh, taking over asset for last uh, one and a half years. So subsequently, theft took place. We complained to RPF. But you see, it's a this case tells you that unless you are very sure about the location of asset and your requirement, work should not be taken up. And ultimately, it's a waste of money. Finally, you see, even on date, 140 ton crane remains at Purna, and this shed is at Nanded, and uh, it is being used for some other purpose, not exactly for the purpose for which it was constructed, but then such things can be avoided, provided you have a clarity of thought, and uh, decision is taken, uh, you know, correctly based on the facts. Okay, this is well, something which I would like to, to share with you. I hope uh, everybody understands what is uh, ultrasonic fraud detection of rails. Okay, uh, I, I'll explain to you because you will not be aware fully about this. Whatever sound we are able to hear, it's audible range. And beyond audible range, you have a higher range frequency, and lower range also you have. So we use higher range frequency ultrasonic fraud detection. For that, we use that frequency. The purpose is to, you know, rails are manufactured in a plant. It will have certain flaws, inherent flaw at the manufacturing stage, or when we do welding, it can have certain flaw. Due to traffic, also, uh, we have uh, you know certain flaws which develop over a period of time because of overstressing of rails. So there is a mandated provision that. The rails are to be tested at a certain frequency, 
like say if uh, traffic is say 80 GMT, I have to test till every month. If it is 60 GMT, I have to test till every two months. Something like that. So these are just numbers for the sake of explanation. So testing of rail is something with if it is not done and if the flaw grows in the rail, that this could lead to failure and lead to, uh, this could lead to derailments. So basically it is related to safety. So direct safety concerns are with use of the testing of rails. Regular practice that you, whatever resources you have departmentally, you use that resource and then balance work you outsource. So we had a contact in place and that was about to expire. Uh, you can see the detail here, like uh, tender was awarded in seventeen with completion period of 12 months and value was 11.42 crore. Original quantity was executed as per schedule and calling of first tender was initiated. And as usual, so we went up to 125% variation. So the time was almost April 18 and the value went up to 14.25 crore. Tender was under finalization, so we went up to 140% with approval of, you know, SAG officer and whatever uh, you need to do for, you know, going for such variation and supplementary agreement was executed. In the meantime, we finalized another new tender because we are already approaching 140%. So, and agency was asked to submit PG. So, 22nd October, we decided uh, the tender and uh, if they were asked to submit PG within 60 days time. It so happened that the party did not come forward to submit the performance guarantee and uh, we had to terminate the contract by forfeiting EMD. But now the issue remains, how do you carry out testing? Because your in-house capacity is insufficient for adhering to schedule of inspection of USFD testing. So this is a case where probably variation beyond 150% is justified. That's what I want to convey you. Like say, what I did in that case, I, since this was happening, so uh, I went to my general manager and I told him, so this is the situation. Most likely I will have to come and uh, request you for variation beyond 150%. I don't have any option because I have finalized gender and the guy is not responding. So, and we have to continue with real testing. Then even we went to our counterpart in finance and we told them this is uh, happening. So we processed the case knowing that this man is not going to turn up. With finance concurrence and GM's approval, finally we went up to 200% and we decided, uh, in the meantime, we put it another tender. So the message from this case is that at times variation becomes inevitable because USFD testing of rails cannot be put on hold. And agency which was finalized is failing. But rail testing has to continue if you want to run rails safely. So such cases should be looked into with a different angle. As compared to normal variation proposals, I fully agree with uh, finance view that normally we should not exceed beyond say 125% or in some cases, if it is required, 40%. If you at all you want to vary, start in advance. As I was saying that administration of contract is very important. So that tells you that as you, the, the work processes, you have to reassess the quantity of work and variations, if you want, you can go for, if possible, go for another tender or if you want to process variation, process variation in advance before execution. So this is a case where a variation beyond 150% was invited. That is the message from this case. Okay. So uh, what are the important points? Takeaways from you know uh, this discussion, what we have we, we had so far for last one and a half hours. Change of mind after sanction of work is something which needs to be avoided. And railway is badly affected by this, that we decide something at one point of time when the project is being planned and then when it is to be executed or when it comes to stage of sanction and then real ex planning for execution, then because of change of guard, the perception changes and we want certain more things. That is something where again project gets delayed. Then at times, you know, sanctioned projects are being questioned 
uh, advisors, which may or may not be correct. At times, it will be correct if the project. But most most of the times, once a project sanction has come, it has already gone through all the channels, and then finally it has been sanctioned. And lateral thinking should be limited. You know, uh, if you let's say uh, you want to save money, uh, there are different ways of saving money. But uh, if you want a facility, you have to invest. You cannot depend on somebody else to create facility for you, or let's like say you cannot bank upon state government for your facility. Let's like say for remote areas, if you think that the state government is constructing quarter and they will give it to you, no, they are constructing for their own needs. Then uh, you see, rate paid surveys on projects is very very important, and this has to be seen from a different angle, like uh, reconnaissance survey is a Rough work. It cannot be of the same accuracy as final location survey, and there will be variation between abstract cost and detailed estimate cost. So these are facts of life which needs to be accepted and understood. So every time you cannot stick to the gun that nothing beyond abstract estimate because abstract estimate is something which was prepared based on certain information without investing much of time and money. So there will be a variation between abstract and detailed estimate. Then. Uh, You see, if somebody comes to you with proposal for use of technology, you for site investigation, for survey, etc., be liberal with them because there are only few people who think of planning, design, investigation. Encourage them because planning a project properly is something which helps the organization in long run, and the completion period is shorter comparatively if it is done properly, and completion cost is. Much lower. Then completion report is one thing which I am worried seriously because if we, uh, each railway will have figures in thousands, like say on our railway, I recall it used to be about 1300, 1400 CRs to be drawn. And whenever there is a review meeting, PFA sir will uh, present that that I have, I have so much from construction, so much from this division, that division, headquarter. But once we do a project, the best thing is that the same team should close the project instead of. Uh, handing over to somebody else who is not competent, who has not worked on the project, and that fellow will be struggling or will not do anything. Availability of funds is another issue. Of course, this is not there now. Then, use of technology like say software, your gadgets, artificial intelligence. These things need to be encouraged because ultimately it is slowly we have to reduce our main power, and only technology can help you. Or replace manpower requirement. So the use of technology has to be encouraged on projects and on railways as well. Okay, I'll just share one experience then we close because I think uh, you all are looking for your lunch and all. So I was working on a uh, international project in Malaysia that was 2002 to 2005 for three years. It was one billion US dollar project, 180 kilometer long. And it was a meter gauge track. Uh, I'll de-emphasize because meter gauge we have a perception that speed potential potentials are very low. But this project had two purpose. One was to doubling of project and then increasing the speed to 160 kmph on, uh, on meter gauge track. Project duration was 24 months, and as I was saying, substantial project time has to be devoted on planning and investigation. So 24 by 24 months. Therefore, investigation. When I landed, it was already 18 months time. So, being from Indian Railways and what I had seen here, that project means execution at site. When I landed there, uh, I still recall I had my chief resident engineer. That is a system on the project that we have a chief resident engineers under which different type of experts will work. I was a track expert there. So, when I asked my uh, CRE chief resident engineer, Mr. Chu, who was a Chinese guy, why, why, Mr. Chu, why we are not uh, at site? We have uh, already lost 18 months. He says, "Wait for two, six more months. Our planning, design, investigation time is 24 months. Then you will see that see that there is no stopping, and you will be uh, you can see the, thereafter that we will be working all 24 hours and all throughout the year. And that came out to be true after six months' time. That project had a you know freedom of taking technical decision. Let's say if." on indian railways or in, in case of india and all the other departments also if you have entered into a contract changing even a minor thing is very very difficult you think of 
equal opportunity you think of complaints you think of who will approve and all but there i found that if a technical decision is required you can take a decision and then it is not seen from other angle if it is a required decision you take it it's over apart from timeline quality of delivery was if you see if there were only two constraint uh, at that time um, uh, mr mahathir mohammad was pm of the country malaysia once he came to project side he said only two constraints are there one is timeline whatever is decided is final second is delivery my quality of delivery has to be of excellent standard whatever you want to do but quality should not be inferior to any world project so this was this is the experience on it was a project then take aways as i was saying always a goal has to be supreme like say different individuals different departments work but then if railways goals are not met with it is of no use team working is a must like say we have we are really from different department ultimately we should work towards you know uh, delivery of projects which is of common good common masses then common public cause to be kept in mind as i have been emphasizing planning investigation process to be encouraged and liberal views on investigation expenses to be taken cases where we do not have expertise to be outsourced to define requirement is the fix and methodology this we have to accept that we we do not we are not expert of everything if we don't know go to experts spend some money they will tell you what to do how to do instead of you know start doing yourself and then you learn into trouble then you go to expert and try to find a solution important areas are updation of knowledge a lot of people like my personal view not you know official that people should work for some time in private sector for few years time then they realize their work and they improve also like i once i worked in malaysia i improved lot of my, I, there was lot of improvement in my technical skills even on personal level i gained a lot like i had to drive my car i had to cook my food because there's nobody there so you learn lot of things then sense of responsibility towards our national goal is a must because unless we all think in the same direction our goal cannot be achieved and use of technology for scientific management for project management and then the project management is one area where a lot of you know uh, developments have taken place internationally we are lagging behind we don't use any tool we don't have any project management technique it's all whatever uh, new dal do will do that is the final thing that's all i think i want to share from you now your turn to ask questions because nobody has been allowed to ask a question probably i think there are other issues so you are you can come forward if you have anything yes participants you can unmute and ask any yeah, ask questions, questions. Yes. all are welcome to ask I think we have forty, forty-one persons. Nobody has a question. Surprising because I am, uh, you know, one who has been uh, associated with Sitara for a long time, and probably we have questions in, when you are talking. And towards the end, you have question session. Actually, there were around sixty-six, sixty-eight, like that, sir. Now it has come to forty-four. Forty-four. So I am surprised nobody has a question. <laughs> I, I, I think I don't know whether I was not able to communicate or audio was not there. I don't know, but. normally there should be some question some interaction participants you can ask any question not only you see not on the session related to this project this presentation if you have anything else also you can ask like say whatever you expect from us yes. you can ask me some are expected in hindi sir that is also one of their issue okay 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 it is uh, very much clear sir no problem in that case okay Uh, please place the PPT. Yeah, I'll okay. share that uh, PowerPoint. But when I have this, I'll share the PowerPoint. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I, I, I think, with your permission, I'll close the presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, please. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Okay. Sir, thank you, sir. That was an interesting and informative session. Jakarta, we thank you for sharing your knowledge and experiences on the platform, sir. Thank you very much. I also thank all the participants. for this wonderful session on this subject uh, thank you sir thank okay you. thank you very much sir.
but the topic for uh, monday is in inspection and check of station accounts uh, login time is 11 o'clock and session will start at 11:30 up to 13 hours thank you